Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. And this morning, on this beautiful um, autumn day, I'm reviewing a book from the Legal Action Group, The Access to Justice Charity. This is an important book, which you will hear a little bit more from me about in a moment. Uh, it's about tribunals. It's called Tribunal Practice and Procedure, and it specifically looks at the tribunals under the Tribunals, Courts and Enforcement Act 2007. It's now in a fifth edition, a very popular book, been written by um, a leading judge, uh, Edward Jacobs. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for producing this work. I know how much um, help it's given a lot of people. Um, I've given the title of our book review 10 years on and this book is still as brilliant as ever because the book's been around for 10 years now and it's been very helpful to a lot of people. Let's look at it first. It's a heavy book. Lag, very much the house style of lag. There's the paperback, there's the front, there's the spine and there's the back. And you can see there's a shaded area at the back there, which is where the appendices are. Let me just go to those straight away so you can see. There we go, appendices. You've got the legislation and a few other things. Obviously, at the back of the book, runs to 700 odd pages. You've got a house style index. So you should be able to find things very easily. Uh, certainly, that's one of the beauties of the uh, Legal Action Group titles. Uh, you should find things very easily. The book's available as an e-book. There's the actual front page. There's a little website um, link if you want to get to the e-book itself. Then you've got um, the blurb from LAG and a very useful forward. And I will refer to um, Dame Judith's uh, remarks in a few minutes because they're very helpful setting the tone. Now, um, Lord Justice Carnworth um, gave the forward to the first edition some 10 years ago. And he was at that time senior president of the tribunals. There's also a preface from Edward um, for uh, dated August 2019, setting out uh, the changes that have taken place. Um, I have continued my previous practice of providing a text that is generally applicable to all jurisdictions. And he's getting trying to get the balance sorted out. And he's also very grateful if, if anybody who spots anything uh, or makes any comments, he'd be very like, pleased to hear from them, which I think is a nice uh, point to make. There's the index, uh, sorry, the content section. And you can see it's quite a large number of, all the usual stuff is there, of course. There are 15 chapters in total, and then, of course, the number of appendices, the Act itself, and then the rules to go with it. That's the Tribunals, and Court, Tribunals Courts and Enforcement Act 2007, then the Tribunal Procedure Upper Tribunal Rules 2008. They are reprinted, which will help. Then you lead to cases, a lot of cases, of course. And then after that, um, we get to um, statutes. And after that, statutory instruments. There we are. And then after that, so you've got some idea of the structure of this book. You've got some European and international material. Again, that's not going to change with Brexit if that does happen, but I think it's important for you to know of the existence of it. And finally, I'll make this comment again. Um, there is a list of abbreviations. Very helpful, because these abbreviations, you can sometimes get a bit confused uh, about what some of them uh, might mean. CPR, for instance, we know that is civil procedure rules, but some of them are a little bit more difficult and the memory can slip a bit, so it's useful to have that. Then you've got the structure of the book. Each chapter, you've got a little index at the beginning, which is helpful. Again, you should be able to find things very clear, clearly. It's easy to navigate. That's the important thing about this. Now, this is the beginning. You can see there's an introduction, there's paragraph numbering, then there's some little bit of footnoting, and that's the way it runs all the way through. You can see the middle of the book, and likewise towards the end, and so forth. And of course, the ch the contents sets out the introduction to the tribunal system, and then all the usual thing: procedure, appeals, referrals, um, uh, proceedings, hearing, representatives, evidence, findings, disposal, the decision, post decision, and so forth. So everything you should need is there. And as I've said, and this is what I'm going to say in the review, I've been very grateful for the uh, the book. Because <clears throat> the book first appeared in 2009. I'm recording this towards the end of 2019. <clears throat> so we're talking of 10 years ago. It's been updated regularly, of course, since it first uh, appeared in publication. 
And from the feedback that we've received, that's Elizabeth and myself, um, for with our previous reviews of the work, um, it remains an extremely popular title. I've had a huge number of hits for these reviews on uh, YouTube and the other channels, um, and obviously people have found it helpful. Um, obviously, it's mainly because it's um, it's a I think a very very direct statement of how the tribunals may affect you. So it's a popular title for users of the tribunal system. And the process used can be, of course, very confusing to many um, applicants. So we feel that Edward Jacobs has provided, uh, what is it, in effect, a, a highly readable account of what happens and how one might approach a claim. Now, the president of the Upper Tribunal Administrative Appeals Chamber is Dame Judith Farby, uh, DBE, and she writes that the variety and complexity of cases heard in tribunals continues to increase through times of change and reform in, in the justice system, which is why, of course, you should always read the most up-to-date edition, which is now the fifth edition in this case. And Dame Judith goes on to pay a valued tribute to the work of the Access to Justice charity, that's the Legal Action Group, LAG, who have published this work. She says that LAG have long been at the forefront of publishing accessible yet expert legal analysis in this as in other areas of law. And actually, absolutely right. They've made our lives a lot easier as practitioners, users, and, and the court service itself. You'll see these books in court and in tribunals, and it's made life easier. We agree, and we'd point out to you that you will see these lag titles in a variety of different settings, including, of course, your local reference library. Now, Jacob's fifth edition provides judges, practitioners and tribunal users with an authoritative commentary on the rules and case law governing the daily work of our tribunals. That's the mission statement. His experience, together with his clarity of style and his meticulous attention to detail, makes this book an invaluable guide to those who are searching for solutions to often knotty procedural questions. Um, on this essential part of what is administrative law. Users will know, of course, that the tribunal system has at present reached a steady state through the matters over which it has jurisdiction because they're continuing to expand. It's especially so, of course, in the general regulatory chamber of the first tier tribunal and the administrative appeals chamber of the upper tribunal. You see now, even for people who are older like myself, how much more complicated the tribunal, the names are complicated, the whole system's become much more complex than it originally was all those years ago. I'm afraid I remember them. <laughs> also causes some importance to applicants is the judicial review work of the Immigration and Asylum Chamber of the Upper Tribunal, which we now know has established its position in place of the administrative court for that jurisdiction. As, as I said, you can see there are changes taking place. The titles of these tribunals is a little bit, it's long, it can be a bit confusing and, and a bit worrying. But once you understand where you are, you'll see that there's logic in what's being done. We consider that this work is one of the most comprehensive and authoritative uh, guides available explaining the integrated tribunal system. The system was created over ten years ago by the um, 2007 Act, it provides us with a structured approach uh, to the practice and procedure of tribunals, setting the rules of procedure and context, and providing a framework for understanding and analysing the practices that apply to them. I will say one thing which I don't think will be liked, but I've found it rather formal, and I've not found it as easy. And as I, I still believe that they've gone away from the original concept, which was to make it much less high bound the way courts are. I've actually found some of the county court work much less less formal than the tribunals, believe it or not. I'm probably, I may be in a minority, but certainly I do feel that. Uh, we found, Elizabeth and I, that the rules of procedure contained here most practical uh, in terms of advice for members of tribunals and for those who find themselves appearing before them. And now for the parties and their representatives, Jacobs deals with obtaining and assessing evidence, writing decisions, applying for adjournments, techniques of questioning and tribunal advocacy. I think that's important because it's a slightly different approach that I adopt in a tribunal than I would adopt in a court for various reasons, mainly because it's meant to be more informal, but I, I do find it gets more technical. I think that's one of the concerns, and I do believe that simplicity is always the key to good advocacy. 
We feel, therefore, that the book remains essential reading, and certainly the help that it gives us does, for tribunal judges and panel members, uh, representatives, and anyone who appears uh, before the tribunal or is interested in how they work. Now, the book itself is the fifth edition, and it was first published on the 2nd of October 2019. I'm recording this a few weeks later. There's the book again, there's the uh, spine, and then there's the back. I'm just opening it up. This is a heavy book. A paragraph numbering you can see on the sides. You've obviously got a small amount of footnoting. They haven't gone mad with the footnoting, which I think is helpful, because sometimes there can be far too much. You have more footnoting than actual body text, which can be a problem. There's the index at the back, very much the house style of lag. You should be able to, as I say, find things. Then at the front, do read the... Um, the comments that are made at the front um, by Edward in the preface and of course uh, by uh, Judith as well. Um, that's the um, main forward there. I'm very grateful to them and in fact I'm very grateful to everybody who's been involved in this work. Uh, you make it a lot easier for people. They're going through trauma and I think it's great that you're able to assist the way you do. So a very big thank you to everybody who's been involved in the work. Bye-bye.